Game of Thrones, it really is the season of Westeros at the moment, and as season 8 is coming to be, and I'm not gonna lie, Jesus Christ, episode 2 last night, what an episode that was, but let's get back into what this video is about. In order to celebrate season 8, I've decided to go over the two main Game of Thrones mods, the Mountain Blade Warband, and put them and pit them up against each other. Which one is better? What are their disadvantages and advantages? Now, of course, this is a world of ice and fire and a clash of kings. They're both known for being incredibly successful and popular Game of Thrones mods for Mountain Blade Warband. While there have been some attempts at other ones, these have really been the only ones that have come out of it successful. These are both single player mods if you haven't played them already and maybe in the future we'll get a multiplayer Game of Thrones mod but I really hope that comes at some point. But not yet. But let's go into it. Which is the best Game of Thrones mod for Mountain Blade Warband? First off, let's talk a little bit about A World of Ice and Fire. Now, this is the more hardcore Game of Thrones mod, if you can really say that. You can choose between it being based off the books, characters, or the TV series characters, and this will change how the gameplay works, which people you come across and sort of change the lore, although the lore in A World of Ice and Fire seems to be a little bit lenient at some points, seeing characters that normally wouldn't really be working together or be in the same parties tend to sometimes end up that way, so that's something that you'll have to get your head around if 100% lore is more your thing. I would put that on the clash of king's side but as an overview a world of ice and fire is built off the viking conquest base rather than the initial mountain blade warband native base because of this it uses a lot of the features viking conquest have such as sea battles ships things like that some new mechanics such as stamina stumbling injuries but also more of a storyline based gameplay element rather than just an open world sandbox while it does have that it, it tries to push you into a more linear story than a clash of kings really does now this can be great for some people but other people might not like this sort of thing i think this sort of guided story base through this sandbox world really makes a world of ice and fire what it is and contributes to a lot of the things that i'm going to be talking about in the rest of this segment now, as I said, there's things like stamina, stumbling, injuries, which you have to get healed by a maester, otherwise they'll cause you some issues later on. There's sea sieges, there's naval battles, some really cool things that haven't really been in that many mountain blade mods. A lot of mountain blade mods tend to just use native, as I feel it is a lot easier to use in terms of you're able to just put in the textures, some new quests and things like that and just let the player do the sandbox, but to really create a storyline and those sort of things and it takes a little bit more time and probably a lot harder to do. But obviously, the end objective is to rule the Iron Throne, to sit on the Iron Throne and look over your lands and vessels and command your way throughout the world. But unfortunately, there's a lot of people to command. There's, there's threats such as the Wildlings in the North and the White Walker invasion, which is a factor to this moment which you'll have to watch out for at some point. But when you're sitting on the Iron Throne, you can do amazing things like command over your lords, tell them what to do, who them to attack, generals as well. You can also send people to the wall if that's more your thing, or you can execute some rude dudes, a bit like Ned Stark, but this time, make sure you listen to them about the White Walker threat first. While Westeros is a vibrant, thriving place, there's not a lot to do when it comes to Essos. It's pretty bare bones at the moment, maybe that will change in the future, but it seems that that's the way it's going to be. There's not a whole lot of stuff you can do over there, which sort of focuses the player more towards Westeros, which makes more sense, since this is where the main storylines are going through in Game of Thrones. And as I said earlier, A World of Ice and Fire is very much focused on storylines and making it an immersive and playable experience for the player. Let's talk a little bit about the troop trees though. They're, they're rather basic, if I'm going to be completely honest. You have your generic swordsman, spearman, that sort of thing of each of the factions, but there's nothing that spectacular. Now, there are a few special units there. There's giants in the game and white walkers, which things like a Clash of Kings don't have, which, yes, granted, is a great thing, but, you know, in terms of the actual bare bones troop trees, there isn't all that much there. There's a lot to be left aside when it comes to unique troops and armies. But most of all, if you ask someone about this mod, the thing they'll say is, my god, is it stupidly hard, especially in the early game. You start off like any other game and pick your background, but make sure you choose this wisely. If you start off as pretty much no one, you're going to have a lot harder of a start than if you're maybe a page at a nobleman's court and so forth, because you need renown to be able to recruit. This means that, you know, if you don't actually get 
renown you're not really going to be able to do much recruiting you're going to have to spend a lot of time working in villages doing quests in order to get that up but if that's more your thing that's definitely a possibility to do it just takes a lot longer to get to the more regular mountain blade gameplay style the wars from the TV series are constantly going on. You'll definitely see wars and armies moving across, such as Stannis Baratheon. You'll see Tywin's army. You'll see Rob Stark's army. And these are all going on while you're doing your thing. You can get involved if you want, or you can just try and stick to the side. It has a large variety of related missions as well, which I would definitely recommend as you do. As I said at the start, if you don't have a background as a lord, recruiting will be almost impossible to begin with until you can gain some renown. So doing these starting missions are imperative to beginning in a world of ice and fire. I mean, there's a few extra things, some cool details, like, I mean, decapitation is one, so I guess that's, 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 that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, but a world of ice and fire's biggest selling point is how brutal it is. Stamina, stumbling, and injuries don't even start to cover it. Weapons and shields will break on a regular basis at the start of the game, and this isn't just you as the player. If you eventually do manage to scrap together a few soldiers from different villages and places, their weak weapons will often break in battle at the start of your gameplay, and you'll see them end up running around with just fists and before being cut down by the enemy's often much superior forces. Yes it will make you rage, you will get angry, and you will have to start over and over again until you finally find the best way to play this. I definitely recommend, as I say, doing a few of the missions. First off, the small things like delivering letters to Rob Stark and things like that. Then he'll go to war and you'll ask to do some more things. If you can't accomplish them, you'll lose renown, which means you're just going to take longer to do these things, and it's all a big circle. But when you go to the war, you can meet characters such as Jor Mormont and Jon Snow. They can send you on a mission to go north of the wall and find find out what this whole White Walker thing is. Never heard of that. But, you know, that didn't quite end well for me. <laughs> yes, White Walkers, my god. Absolutely brutal. I mean, as you know, Jon Snow has a Valyrian sword, so even though I brought a decent sized army, I got slaughtered, because Jon Snow was the only one that could get a single kill. White and White Walkers could only be killed with Valyrian steel fire or dragon glass, and I didn't have any of them except from good old Mr. Kit Harrington at the back, but he couldn't do all that much. I mean, he did kill a White Walker, which was pretty epic, but we got absolutely slaughtered, and they had White Walker giants as well, and this was the early game. Imagine later games when they start coming down in their massive forces. There's going to be a lot that you're going to have to do to put up defenses against that. But let's talk a little bit about A Clash of Kings. It's been the mod that's been around for longer. Everyone knows A Clash of Kings that is an avid Mountain Blade Warband player. Because it's been around for so long, yes, it's a little bit more polished in terms of the basics of the game. It doesn't necessarily have the intricate details and loads of things you can do like A World of Ice and Fire, but because it's been around longer, you'll feel more at home in A Clash of Kings. It feels a lot more like a regular warband start, so better for newer players. If you want the typical Mountain Blade experience with a Game of Thrones skin and a few more polished and cool things, this is definitely the way to go. In terms of the lore, it's definitely more advanced than the world of Ice and Fire. They've focused a lot more on the book's lore and going actually into the characters themselves rather than just following the story of the TV shows. There's some great things like different locations quests, scene design that you won't see in a world of ice and fire. A lot more detail has been put into each of them. There are things like invading factions that can come up through and you're going to have to defend against them. Yes, yeah, sometimes in the early game there's much more powerful factions that can absolutely steamroll through everyone else, but that's just something that you're going to have to endure. Maybe you join them or maybe you have to run away and form somewhere else. In my playthrough I did a lot of recruiting from different places. Despite this mod being around for quite some time, I never really got into it and played all that much of it. So as you can see, I'm recruiting loads of different soldiers from loads of different places and just seeing how they all work. And this brings me on to more of the unique units and equipment. There's some really nice things here. You'll really feel at home if you're a Mountain Blade player in a Clash of Kings. I love the details on the soldiers. I love the details on their armor, their weaponry. There's still some things like your lances can break as well, adding a bit more of a hardcore aspect to it, but it is still a lot nicer and a more casual play than a world of ice and fire. I mean, let's talk a little bit about the soldiers. You can have some great formations like shield walls, squares, wedges, all used for different possibilities when you're in the battles. If you're being charged by cavalry, perhaps a square formation would be a great thing to do. If you're being bombarded by archer shield walls, is probably what you're going to want.
want to accomplish. But in the background gameplay, you can see I did a massive battle here, and I had a lot of Lannister men, or as you can say, Westerlands men, and then I was being attacked by a lot of the Reach guys, or the Tyrells. And this was an incredible battle. I thought this was a lot of fun here. I was guarding my guys, getting my archers. They were doing a lot of firing. You can see the cavalry charging and my archers being able to demolish them. But then they ran out of ammo. I charged forward and I killed the first batch of Tyrell men. I then stood ground, defended, and then waves after wave came at me. After my men would start to run out and they start to go into that all 1v1 fighting styles and things like that, you can see in regular mountain blade gameplay if you don't control your men. And yes, they would be picked off and they would die because I was heavily outnumbered. But then I'd bring them back into a formation, they work together, then we'd do a final charge out and we'd be able to mop up and destroy the attacking forces. But it is a great fun for that Mountain Blade experience, but still feeling immersed in the Game of Thrones world. Talking about Essos, we did touch on it in the world of Ice and Fire. It's a lot more accomplished and filled out in a Clash of Kings. There's a lot more you can do, hiring mercenaries, going recruiting from there, you know, Everything that you could really think of doing, you can do in a Clash of Kings. And rather than in a World of Ice and Fire, when, yeah, you can go over, you can do a few things here and there, but there's not really much you can get your teeth on when it comes to recruiting and building up men and getting quests and things like that throughout Essos. But really, it comes down to preference. Me, personally, I'm not a hardcore Mountain Blade player. I like making videos on the game and playing it casually every now and then, but I don't have time to sink hours and hours into one playthrough. So, A Clash of Kings will probably be the best way for me to do it. And when I was recording all the footage for this, A Clash of Kings was the one that I had the most fun playing. It was the one that I was able to get into quicker and do my sort of thing. Had fun playing a Mountain Blade game. And I know many people out there will be like, Oh, you're not good enough. You're not hardcore. Get in a world of voice of fire. People play in different play styles. I don't have time to sink loads of hours into game. I want to go into a game, have fun, and come out the game. I do so many other things, I don't have the time just to spend it all working on this one thing. So for me, a Clash of Kings is where I want to go. But I did have a lot of fun, and I can see the potential of a world of ice and fire going further into the stories. Defending against the White Walk invasion, finding the ways to stop them, making alliances, and making enemies with different factions. Having this whole story-based gameplay around you, and doing these really cool sea battles, sieges, and of course, field battles. But that's just my opinion on these two mods. I would love to hear what you guys think about these two mods. Which one do you think is better? Or do you think they're pretty much similar in terms of how good they are in general? They just have, like I said, better steered towards certain types of game styles, which then dictates who would rather like them. But also on top of that, what do you guys think of the new Game of Thrones series? Make sure you leave your comments down below. But until then, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button and go and donate to me on Patreon if you want to be really nice I, that would be um, lovely thank you so much for watching though and until then i will see you in the next one